quick update. Casey is um, not able to make today's session. So stepping in is George um, from the ship Bob, ship Bob side. Um, alongside George is Steve. He's the founder and CEO of Bremel Co, which is a really, really cool company. I've, I've known of them and heard of them um, for a while. They're, they're just really great quality stuff. Um, great website as well. So we, without further ado, we can just start kicking it off. But before I hand over to George, um, what, what the session is today, it's gonna be a little bit of a fireside chat on how to launch, sell and fulfill 15K pairs of socks one day before Thanksgiving. So I'm really interested to hear a little bit more about this. So I will hand it over to George. Um, I just put myself on mute, but feel free to make a quick intro to yourself if you'd like a little bit about Shabab, and I'll ask the same for Steve in case people are unfamiliar with um, yourselves and your brands. Sure, absolutely. Thank you, Lindsay. Uh, it's great to be on the call with everyone. Uh, my name is George Wojciechowski. I'm co-founder and VP of partnerships for Shipbob. And Shipbob, for those of you who aren't familiar, we work with uh, D2C e-commerce brands to level the playing field uh, with the bigger players in e-commerce to provide uh, cutting edge logistic services that allow businesses to scale and have uh, efficient ways of delivering their products to their customers. And Steve from Brumble has been one of our clients now for two and a half years, I think. We'll go into that a little bit because you have a really interesting story in how you started with us. Uh, but Steve, uh, would love to uh, hear a little bit about, a little bit more about you and, 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 and your bio. Perfect. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Steve Staffen. I'm the founder of Rummel. Uh, we are a men's direct consumer brand, uh, currently focused on providing top drawer premium uh, products. So think undershirts, socks, boxer briefs uh, on a subscription and also a single purchase option. Um, so I launched the, company, launched the company back in 2017 uh, when I was working full time, uh, ended up partnering uh, with ShipBob, also using Shopify. Uh, as to, to start the growth while I was working full time. Uh, fortunately, I was able to leave my job at the end of last year uh, to start running Brummel full time. So even though we've been around for almost three years now, uh, you know, every day still feels like a new day, uh, which is fun in the startup environment. But I'm calling in from Chicago and very happy to be with everyone today. Cool. And for everyone else, I'm in Chicago as well. So Steve and I are both based here in the Midwest. So question that I want to start off with Steve is uh, kind of, I love hearing this take from different perspectives, but how has your 2020 gone? It's been such a incredible, it's been, a, it's been a very eclectic and incredible year in a lot of ways um, for a lot of people and everyone's got a different story. So how's it gone for you? Oh, uh, everything, you know, uh, last year I was contemplating leaving my full-time job to run this and I had everything I wanted to do in 2020 to hit those goals, hit those target markets. Uh, obviously, 2020 is a complete different, <laughs> different uh, game plan. Um, so, uh, fortunately, uh, at the beginning of January, we were able to raise some outside uh, capital from an investor who was actually one of our customers. Um, and then, you know, called that March 15th hit, uh, right when that quarantine happened. Um, you know, our top three products, our main three products, are socks, underwear, and boxer briefs, uh, boxer shirts. Uh, I personally have barely worn socks since March 15th. Um, so <laughs> that's uh, kind of how a lot of our target customers have gone as well. Um, but uh, we've seen, uh, we've been very fortunate to have a diversified product line uh, in our box brief sales. Everyone's still wearing underwear every day, which is great. Uh, so we've gone, instead of, you know, trying to scale exponential growth, uh, we've been really focused on our, you know, our retaining our current customer base. Uh, our target uh, market is, you know, gentlemen in their, you know, call it age 24 to 32 bracket. Uh, so I've just spent a lot of time uh, emailing them personally, uh, just checking in on them, offering some individual sales uh, and just, you know, making sure they're doing well during this time. Um, and then as our game plan has changed. You know, we've just, we'll be launching a few different kinds of boxer briefs as our next, uh, next product sign and expanding in that area. So that's, just a few insights we've seen there. Um, so it's you no, know, not the 2020 we planned, but uh, just like everyone else, uh, making uh, way with what we can. Incredible. I'm really excited to see what you guys come up with with the boxer briefs, all the products that you 
uh, have introduced since we first started working together have been really unique and uh, very on brand. So excited to see what you're going to do with Boxer Briefs. And uh, congratulations to you for continuing to innovate and build out your product line. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, it's, uh, I'm sure you've seen a lot of uh, brands on your side as well have to do a lot of innovation. Yeah, absolutely. So, Steve, tell us a little bit about your backstory. How did you come up with the idea? Yeah, so my background is all finance. Uh, know very little about e-commerce, marketing, digital, advertising. None of that was really uh, anything I wanted to learn in college or even go into after college. Um, mm -hmm. Here we are today. Life's a little different. Um, so I started working for a boutique investment bank in Chicago, you know, just a financial analyst role, but we were wearing suits every day. Um, and all the guys in my office were wearing the lot of colorful socks for their suits. I had a more preferred, uh, just plain black Navy or gray socks of mine. Uh, and they kind of made fun of me, um, for, for that style. But I, I joked that I was going to start a company that only sold black Navy and gray socks. Uh, and realized that I was actually in the market for just a company that did that already. Uh, I can, you know, send it to me on a subscription at more of a discounted price. There wasn't a company out there in the market. So, um, you know, in late 2017, decided to create one. Uh, mm -hmm. Much easier to do nowadays in 2017, you know, 10 years prior. I don't know if it'd be as easy. Um, so I started working on the brand uh, in late September uh, within about eight weeks. Uh, found a good supplier, built a Shopify site. Uh, and then the week leading up to Thanksgiving, you know, our target was always to, to launch by Black Friday. Uh, I accidentally had 15,000 pairs of shot socks shipped to my uh, downtown Chicago apartment, um, which I don't know if anyone has ever seen 15,000 pairs of socks in one place, but it's, I'll tell you, it's a lot more than you would, uh, you would think. Um, fortunately, I've, seen, I've seen it. It, it takes up large room large rooms like i don't even know how you fit that in your apartment thankfully i had uh two roommates that were both already out of town for thanksgiving um so their their bedrooms turned into our storage rooms uh-huh um, but again i figured out you know how to sell it uh, or the product to sell what website build the website and then i found a large social media account that would help with marketing and promoting so I had all that stuff done, but the last thing I kind of kicked the can down and wrote on was the logistics fulfillment. You know, I never even heard of third-party logistics before. Um, fortunately, uh, through my newsfeed, saw an article about ShipBob. Uh, you know, you guys were growing a lot back then. And even uh, you're growing a lot faster now, but even 2017 had a lot of good press coverage. So I uh, this was, I think, the uh, Tuesday uh, right before Thanksgiving or Monday before Thanksgiving called ship up, uh, just a general generic number on, uh, to, to submit. And, uh, and, uh, within about, you know, a few hours I already had an onboarding call getting hooked, the site hooked up. I was told, go ahead and get, uh, bring the 15,000 pairs of socks over. You know, I don't have a car. And even if I did, it would have took me a good 15 to 20 trips. So I just hired movers. Uh, they brought it over that Wednesday morning before Thanksgiving. Wow. Yeah. And, uh, and then by Friday, you know, we were already uh, placing orders and, and shipping uh, not just domestically, but even internationally. Um, so uh, craziest week in my life uh, to get up and going. But, uh, you know, I don't know what I would have done if, if, if ShipHop wasn't there. I think I would have just had to you know, pack them myself or had a few friends come over. But instead... You know, I think I spent that Friday night at a bar watching orders come in on my phone. So uh, it was much more fun. All right. You know, I've heard that story dozens of times, and it never ceases to amaze me every time I hear it. It's just an incredible feat that you accomplished turning it around. And it was the start of a very beautiful relationship uh, that uh, maintains to this day. So it's uh, it maybe, is it fair to say that Thanksgiving 2018 is the most memorable Thanksgiving? that you've had? I would say so. That was, uh, yeah, I would say so. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Thank you for sharing that. That's always a great story and uh, also kind of plays into the theme of the entrepreneur being having a can-do spirit and not stopping at anything to make, to get the products out the door and succeed in, 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 in getting their idea to the market. And uh, I love hearing it every single time. Uh, that, that I that, that I get a chance to. 
Uh, getting a little bit more granular for, for a minute, take us through the process of designing, prototyping, and manufacturing your product. How does, how does that work? Yes. So, um, again, uh, well, I guess we'll go back to our first origination of just, uh, you know, our first product, which was just men's socks. Uh, again, it was just supposed to be a good everyday sock that went well with a dress shoe, but also something you'd see yourself wearing around the house. Um, so, Went to, you know, the Nordstrom's, the Macy's, the Neiman Marcus, uh, bought, you know, 20, 30 pairs of different kinds of socks, you know, wanted to make a, a few different changes. Uh, so we found a supplier uh, overseas, told them, you know, we want uh, a different style and length on the calf uh, to go right underneath the calf muscle, uh, a little stronger top part of the sock, as well as heels and the toe, you know, usually where you get your uh, holes in the socks. Um, and then kind of keep building and changing it from there. Uh, then kind of made sense to next go to the boxer briefs. Uh, you know, for me, just wanted something I could, you know, work out in, wearing this, where, where to work while well, in a suit or jeans or even, you know, on a golf course. So went with the boxer brief style as opposed to anything else. Um, we built up a lot of uh, a good customer base just with our socks. So once we wanted to uh, keep going with boxer briefs, you know, started testing sampling with 15 individuals, seeing what they liked, went back and forth. So it took a long time to get that box of briefs, just how we wanted it to, but uh, that's how we were able to get it done. Same with the undershirt, which took probably another year after our box of briefs to, to launch. Amazing, amazing. And I, I love that about your, about Brummel's products is that they are very dynamic. You literally can work out in them or wear them to the office or, or to some dinner in the evening. Uh, there's a lot of, flexibility uh with, with what you create what you created yeah so it's uh it's very fun to do um and it's uh definitely part of that entrepreneurial spirit but it's uh it's a very fun take wonderful wonderful so you currently leverage ship bob for your fulfillment needs uh which fulfillment centers of ours do you currently leverage and tell me a little bit about your experience working with ship bob uh, over the last three years, two and a half years. Yeah, so I've been able to use lever, uh, ship off, leverage ship off in a few different ways, just even besides the fulfillment side. Uh, but we'll start with fulfillment first. So currently, just in the uh, Chicago uh, Fulfillment Center uh, in Cicero, mm -hmm. um, had plans to kind of get more aggressive after raising money earlier this year, but have kept it into Chicago. Uh, our customer base are, you know, kind of what you would guess, uh, kind of more urban. Uh, big city areas. So our top five, you know, cities make up half our sales. Uh, so think New York, LA, San Francisco, Chicago, Houston, Miami. Um, so it's actually awesome just being located in uh, in Chicago and kind of being that center point uh, as opposed to be on tilting on either side of the uh, the country. Um, so pretty dynamic in, in that sense, but um, looking to also just grow uh, into different fulfillment centers as well as um, especially a Canadian uh, center. Um, we've seen a lot of growth internationally, which I've been very surprised by. Um, I don't think I'd ever order online socks from, you know, some company in France, but we have, we have a lot of people in Paris ordering socks from us. So, not unless it's a fabulous product. And I guess you guys are putting out a really fabulous product that people in France just are like, hey, I'm going to wait and, and order these socks until they cross the ocean. Yes. So been fortunate there. Um, and then other ways we've been able to use uh, to leverage ship out pretty well is uh, not just the dyna uh, the team you guys have that have been very helpful, but the analytics dashboard you guys have built out. You know, I've been a customer for just over two and a half years now. Uh, the analytics behind it, some of the reporting I get, uh, it's just been an awesome tool. Uh, when it come to when it came to raising money and pitching to investors, you know, having you know very detailed reporting on our logistics side and fulfillment side, um, you know, it's much easier to run this as a one person, two person company keeping a small team. And that's uh, what a lot of investors like, um, especially just getting a breakdown of actual, you know, state by state, um, you know, shipping times, shipping costs, um, and going from there. So it's been able to leverage that very well. And then a lot of cool tools you guys added on later on between um, the trends uh, at ship up. Um, that, I think that came out more from the COVID. Yep. Um, I've, you know, I've seen a lot of, I saw a lot of newspaper, uh, newsletters, uh, a lot of people have tagged it, uh, that link into theirs. That's been fun to watch as well as the carriers, uh, for ShipBob, uh, just m monitoring the, um, 
four main carriers and their shipping times. Uh, those have been just cool tools you guys have built on as well. Yeah, I very much appreciate you saying that. We take a lot of pride in the analytics functionality of our dashboard. We, we firmly believe that, you know, the best value, one of the best values we can provide merchants is information. And if you're able to mine your own data and make decisions about the direction of your business, then we are, uh, we are, we are very happy to add value in, in, in that way. And uh, I don't know of any other logistics company out there that provides uh, that sort of data uh, so, so easily to, to, to their merchants. And uh, I also appreciate the call out on the carriers and the trends. So for those of you who haven't seen it, I'll just plug it, uh, we'll, I'll plug it really quick. I'm just mentioning. So if you go to trends.shipbob.com early on during COVID uh, with this belief that we wanted to arm our merchants and the broader e-commerce community with information, we started publishing the trends that we were seeing uh, with uh, products that were leaving our fulfillment centers and how those were affected during COVID. And then more recently, we took it one step further, further uh, and did it with uh, the carriers that we're, we work with. So if you get a chance, check that out. It's super interesting. And uh, let me know if you have any feedback on it. Um, you mentioned that you raised money earlier this year, which is also kind of crazy that you, know, you raised money in 2020. But what was that experience like for you, raising money for the first time? You bootstrapped it, you know, typical determined entrepreneur story, bootstrapping it yourself the first couple of years. Was it a relief that now you have the, you know, room to expand and hit your expansion plans? Or was it like a validating feeling that like, okay, what we've been up to is actually, uh, you know, large private equity money also believes in what we're doing. And so now, you know, it's hugely validating for me and my business. Yeah. So it's kind of a mix of all the points to talk about, um, you know, bootstrapping was, was really um, you know, the way to start. Uh, and then, um, you know, I was spending weekends flying to, uh, whether it was New York, Los Angeles, even Austin, trying to pitch, uh, on a Friday, uh, take off work to go pitch and then, you know, fly back to Chicago. So, you know, obviously you're going to get a lot of rejection, a lot of no's that's every, any entrepreneur, entrepreneur that gets it on the first try, good for them, but I, I've never heard one of those stories. Um, so it's endearing. Um, I was fortunate where my old, my previous line of work, I was kind of assisting a lot of these startups raise capital. So I had a little inside knowledge or preview uh, to other companies, especially some other Chicago companies. Um, but you're right. The validation is, uh, is really big. Uh, or it's just a great feeling, especially after getting so many no's when you get an investor that says, let's go. Um, you know, they believe in us, they believe in you, they believe in the brand. Um, that's just a big validating feeling. Um, you know, it's also a daunting task because now the work kind of starts, uh, even, even more than so. Um, so, uh, again, had a lot of big targets for 2020 and now we're just trying to kind of weather this hopefully once in a lifetime pandemic, uh, and then come out even, you know, stronger with our customer base and ready to really scale. Wonderful. Wonderful. And so with the fresh financing, do, are you going to be expanding your team or is your business model as such that you can keep it with a tight team and execute on your strategy? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so the original plan was to be able to keep a tight team, just what we have. I have a partner down in Houston and that's also where our investor is. Um, but, you know, nowadays there's so many different um, small, smaller agencies, you know, different groups, different advertising apps that you can, you know, outsource a lot of that work, whether it's on the marketing side, uh, you know, fulfillment's taken care of um, because of ship bomb. Uh, you hire, you know, someone to make site upgrades every now and then. Um, what I've had been fortunate uh, with um, is, you know, a lot of talent came out of the market when a lot of these clothing brands and startups had to kind of um, lay off and furlough some people. Um, so I've actually been working with uh, a few different in individuals on other projects uh, that will launch kind of when we go back into growth mode. So again, fortunate enough to get a lot of talented people that, you know, I'm not paying them on a salary, but on that kind of hourly basis, work project basis uh, has been helpful. Um, so again, you know, I think it's a lot easier nowadays compared to 10 years ago to be able to keep such a smaller team. Um, so that's kind of our game plan for now. Yeah, awesome, fantastic. Excited to see what the future holds in that regard. Um, one of the thing, one of the core tenets of why ShipBob exists and why we 
what, why, why the company works so closely with merchants is we believe in inspired ideas and brands that people are putting out there that consumers identify and see themselves in. Uh, I, I believe that uh, you know people make purchasing decisions because they see either usefulness or some current or maybe future version of themselves in the products that they're buying. What is Brummel trying to communicate? What does your brand say? What is you? What are you putting out there that people are seeing and being like, "Oh, that's me. That's my style." Is it? Is it the innovations of the product? Is it the designs? Yeah. So it's a uh, you know real. Um, you know, we always thought of ourselves as a lifestyle brand. I never thought of myself as a. I started a stock company. I never, never would say that. Uh, <laughs> others would, but that was never the idea of it. Yeah. Um, it was definitely just a, a new. I think a new brand that could fit in the market. Mm -hmm. um, again, you know, something I wanted to resemble with first um, and then can it grow from there. So, you know, our 24 to 32 age group, you know, it's more of a, a cleaner uh, lifestyle brand. Um, when I talked to a lot of people that uh, I came across through in line of work, um, you know, we actually, you know, had small jokes about, you know, the, whether they were clients or whatever, uh, they would joke about the, uh, plain colored sock versus the colorful sock, you know, two kind of guys. Um, and, you know, that kind of resonated with me that a lot of people were in that kind of uh, that market or, or that belief. Um, so just that cleaner, um, more of a, you know, wanting to dress well lifestyle as opposed to the dressing down of, uh, of one side. Um, so cleaner side, uh, but we also, you know, have done very well on the organic kind of audience through, um, uh, more etiquette guides. Uh, again, my partner runs a, a, a Twitter account that he's been able to tweet out different um, kind of organic uh, articles that have just included Brummel on a little side note. And that's where we've seen a lot of growth through there. So just you know, being strategic with uh, communicating with our audience has been an awesome thing that we've been able to do. Awesome. Awesome. Out of my own personal curiosity, is there, is there a, a a number or a measurement of how many times per year the average person buys socks or underwear? Have you have you dug into your analytics to kind of get an estimate as like, okay, my customers who have been with me a year and a half, two years, I see that they're buying every four months or six months or so? Yeah, so um, I would say our average, uh, you know, at least the subscription side, that's you know, every three months. Again, we wanted to build something that was a quarterly subscription, not a monthly all the other stock companies that are out there were shipping you one pair of socks every 12 months. Um, so you're getting dinged for shipping every 12 months. I just thought it makes more sense on a quarterly basis. So our average customer is getting about um, six pairs every three months. Um, so, you know, that's kind of the idea of the, you know, the lifestyle of that is just more fresh pairs instead of, you know, holding on to old socks for so too long. So it's more you wear them, replace them, wear them, replace them. That was kind of the lifestyle we were going for. Um, so again, I assume that, uh, you know, the average guy probably buys, you know, four a quarter, but if you, you know, lower the price and, you know, make the product a little better, uh, you'd be able to sell a subscription where people are doing six every three months. Um, yeah. So that's kind of what we've seen. There are some guys that, you know, get 20 pairs every three months. I, not something <laughs> I would do, but uh, we have them. Um, well, and I think a lot of guys that travel, especially, uh, like getting fresh pairs for their, for their trips there too, for work. But obviously that's been on the, on pause for now. Sure. Yeah. I've always thought that that's been a, a very intelligent aspect of your business that turned out to be a home run, the quarterly subscription. You know, you don't overwhelm people on a monthly basis. You give them the option to kind of wear their socks and, 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 and kind of, uh, you know, uh, get comfortable with them and, 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 and then look, start looking forward to the next designs you have coming down the pipeline. Do you have customers that uh, maybe start a little bit later on or like start like now and they're like, whoa, I heard about your Q3 2019 socks. Can, is, can I have access to those? Can I buy those? Uh, because they're getting the quarterly pair. Like are there, are, are, I guess I'm asking, do people collect some of your older styles that may not be available? Um, no, not as much, uh, not as much there. Um, they're kind of just signing up when they're, when the, the need fits for them. And, you know, we offer a 10% discount if you do subscribe. So a lot of people just kind of taking advantage of that, uh, discount as well. Yeah. Um, but we have seen, uh, a lot of people add box briefs and undershirts to their subscription, which I was kind of surprised by just because, 
Um, you know, those are products that I typically buy in bulk, uh, let alone try to do a subscription. I know MeUndies tried doing a subscription, mm -hmm. um, but you know, ours was just kind of leave it more open. But uh, so I reached out to a lot of those customers just to see what their process was like, and that just they would rather redo their top drawer uh, through you know nine months as opposed to doing it all at once. Um, so they will stay on a subscription for you know three three times once every three months. So it's been interesting. Fantastic. Uh, I'm curious, what platforms or tools do you use to run your business? Clearly, you use ShipUp for fulfillment, but what else are you using out there that other entrepreneurs might want to uh, check out? Ooh, all right. Yeah. So, um, so again, that first two years of working, uh, working my full-time job, I think I was doing 60, 70 hour work weeks, but I always had ShipUp and Shopify open um, for email. Clavio has been uh, a big one for us. Um, I know there are probably a lot of other competitors out there. I've just never, you know, that's who I started with and that's who I've stayed with. Um, whew, other tools. Uh, yeah, you can go through your, your yeah. Um, yeah, keep it simple. That's fine. I mean, that's yeah. another thing that other entrepreneurs might want to hear. I think there's oftentimes there's so much noise and so much pressure to be like, oh, I need to try that app or that sounds cool that like, hey, just stick to what you need. And then when that a new need emerges, go out there and investigate what your options are, get a trial and, and see it for yourself. Yeah, so um, yeah, that, obviously there's a, there's definitely a lot of apps and different kind of things out there. Uh, I've kept it on more on the simple side. Cool. Uh, what does the future look like for Brummel when you look out the next year, three years, five years? What do you envision for your company? Yeah, so that's uh, definitely a great question. Um, we want to, you know, try to get in as many uh, top drawers of guys as possible. Uh, we think our for our That's product fit in well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, we think it's a it's obviously a product that you know we target uh, that kind of 24 to 32 year old range, but definitely a product that you know I have a lot of friends that buy for their dads or or all over. So really being that uh, larger lifestyle men's brand um, and just keeping keeping on the growing side. Uh, we'd love to get more international if possible. Um, we're named uh, Brummel after Bo Brummel, who was a uh, figure back in the 1790s uh, out in London. Uh, just more of a, he, uh, he coined the term dandy. He was the original dandy. I was going to say, he, was he like some sort of like, you know, London dandy? Yes, yes. So he coined that term, uh, invented kind of the modern tie and suit. Um, you know, said guys shouldn't be wearing two uh Loud, uh, loud stockings it should be more on the uh darker uh kind of suit side um so that's why we named after him there's a statue of him up in london um so uh yeah so i, I wasn't too familiar of him before this but uh, a fun character so you know a lot of growth in a lot of different areas but you know i think we'll always stay a men's brand you'll see a lot of uh brands either go unisex or unisex or um start off that way i think we'll just continue to be that, that men's brand and, and delivery those products. Awesome. That's really exciting and, 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 and sounds fantastic. Have you ever snuck over to London to where the statue is and, and put your socks on the statue to take a picture of it for marketing? Uh, I did, actually. Um, <laughs> no way. Last year, uh, the Chicago Bears played out in London uh, yeah. for a game and me and my family went out. Um, so I got a picture with him, saw his old house. Uh, so that was cool. Um, Awesome. That was the coolest side of it. Great. So we're wrapping up. So the final question I have is, do you have any advice for the entrepreneurs on the, sh on the session on, on the session today based on your, you know, last two and a half, three years um, of being an entrepreneur, an e-commerce entrepreneur? Yeah. Um, just always get started and always keep moving. Um, I would say there are a lot of, you know, there are probably, you know, so many reasons why I should not have started this company back in, you know, late September 2017. Um, but, uh, you know, a lot of headwinds against it, but that's, uh, I'd say the more fun side and keep going. Um, but also just connect with your customers as much as possible. Um, I like to think that, you know, at, uh, if me and uh, any customer were, you know, at a bar, we'd get along just well and be friends. Um, so I've spent a lot of this time during COVID just reaching out to them individually. You know, it's a very long, long list that so you're doing 25 or 50 emails a day, but you know, that's what really, uh, I think you know, being close with your customer base now um, and ma maintaining that current retention uh, will have that growth that you want or pay off dividends in that three, five year, 10 year plan. Um, so always keep brand building because 
uh, that's always a, an important role for growth. Amazing. That's fantastic advice. Thank you for that, Steve. And it's something that we've been able to see from our end as well. The loyalty among your customers and the relationship you have with the people who buy into your brand is off the charts. So congratulations to you for that. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that. Cool. So I think we're at our almost half hour mark. Um, yeah, let me just chime in here. Yeah, just about, just about two minutes to spare. Um, Steve, someone had asked if you were, you, you mentioned doing, hey, let me get my video going too. You mentioned doing uh, personal outreach to your customers. Is this, is this email strictly or is it a mix of texts, email? What does that look yeah. like? Um, so it's been a uh, different direct, direct email from my Steven at brummelco.com oh, directly okay. to them. All of our, or the majority of our uh, customer base is, uh, you know, they all have LinkedIn. They're all in business, finance, law, mm -hmm. something that requires you to probably have a LinkedIn. Um, so just getting a better, you know, now just send them a quick email saying, hey, you're riding out COVID in, uh, you know, New York or Seattle or wherever they are. Yeah. Uh, just checking in briefly. Yeah, I love that. And and I, I mentioned this right right before your session that, that the overall theme of today not you know having any kind of rehearsal is just that that customer experience and creating some kind of community and it sounds that's exactly what you're doing is within your outreach and your personal touches um you're creating that sense of community and why else would they go to a competitor of yours if they're getting they feel like they're part of you and your community and your and your brand's journey yeah so, so it's been a it's been a very long project but it's been definitely yeah. fun and worthwhile yeah, I'm sure. So, um, Steve and George, I, this was awesome. Thank you yeah, I will so add really much. Quickly, I think that's a really great lesson for entrepreneurs, too. I think when people are starting out, they feel oftentimes that they've got a shotgun the market, you know? And mm -hmm. what Steve has done really well is build a community. And I think that exactly. makes all the difference in the world. Yeah, exactly. I, I agree. And, I, and I'm loyal to those that make me feel like I'm part of their brand and their story and their, you know, success. So I think at the end of the day, I think that's the way to go, really. Um, so I think, Steve, you've been doing that really well, it sounds like. Um, and even though, you know, I, I've purchased things for um, the guy in my life <laughs> off of your store. So it's definitely very great quality stuff and great. Um, great website and experience there. So again, Steve, thank you so, so much. It was awesome to hear more about your story um, and how you came to be, you know, a successful um, brand that you are today. And George, thanks for hopping on and chatting um, with Steve uh, throughout um, his journey and just how you guys work well together. Yeah, it's been a pleasure. Yeah, thank you, both thank you so much. much. Thanks, Lindsay. Have a great rest of your day.